right? Because Richie Nana is allergic to dogs. So if she's allergic to dogs, then you, she probably can't have a poodle, right? She probably can't have a poodle if Nana's allergic to dogs. That wouldn't really make sense. Um, so what's something else I kind of want to add, because this is kind of an event that happened. This is, we said, Junie B's not going to follow the Super Bowls. Um, what's kind of another thing that happened? It happened, I think when I read it, either Tuesday or yesterday. Um, when they got into Lucille's room, what kind of started happening when they got into her room? Ali, what started happening when they got into her room? Lucille showed them stuff, but they couldn't even touch them or use them. Lucille started showing Junie B and Grace all this stuff, and she kept telling them, no, right? She's like, you can't touch that. You can't touch that. Nope, that's expensive. Don't touch that. What else, Emily? She was very, being very bossy. She was being very bossy. Um, was, I like that. I'm going to put being very bossy because, and then I'm going to write what Ollie said. She was showing the girls, her stuff, but not letting them touch, right? She's showing them their stuff, but every time they try and go and touch something, she's like, no, don't touch that, right? She's like, no, nah, -uh, don't touch that. So those are kind of some of our events that have been happening throughout the whole thing. Um, and throughout the story. So now we're gonna read the next chapter and we'll kind of be looking for maybe an event that happens or a character trait that pops out or something that sticks out to us. So this is chapter six, Bouncing. After we finished playing Cinderella, the Nana called us to dinner. Me and Lucille and that Grace skipped into the big dining room who sat at a long, shiny table. Pretty soon, Lucille's Nana came in from the kitchen, and she gave us our dinner. And guess what? Its name was Beans and Frank. Hooray, I said. Hooray for Beans and Frank, because this is my favorite kind of home cooking. The Nana did a sm tiny smile. Well, we usually have a cook, but I gave her the night off, she said. After that, the Nana poured milk into beautiful sparkly glasses. Oh, Nana, these are your best crystal glasses, said Lucille, real thrilled. I love these expensive things. Me too. I love these expensive things too, I said. Only too bad for me, because nobody even told me that the crystal glasses were very heavy. So when I picked up my glass, it slipped right out of my hand and fell on the floor and it broke into lots of pieces uh-oh that's probably not good right oh my lucille's whole mouth came open oh no you broke it you broke my nana's crystal glass the nana's face was reddish and scrunchy Sorry, Nana, I said real soft. Sorry I broke your crystal glass. The Nana sucked her cheeks way into her head. Let's just try to be more careful, shall we, dear? She said. I bobbed my head up and down. We shall, I said back. After that, I ate my beans and Frank very carefully. Only pretty soon my Frank spilled off my fork and he landed on the Nana's white tablecloth. Oh no, hollered Lucille. That's my Nana's good linen tablecloth. She brought it all the way from Ireland. The Nana's face was twisty and puffy. I quick pushed my plate away from me. My stomach felt in a tighter knot. Yeah, only guess what? I am not actually hungry anymore, and so we'll just sit here and not spill anything, I guess. 
Then Anna cleaned up my messes with a wet cloth. After she finished, she brought us chocolate ice cream for dessert. Only too bad for me, because a teeny plop of ice cream popped right off my spoon, and it landed on my chair cushion. Then Anna did a big breath. You're a bit of a bull in a china shop, aren't you, dear, she said. Sorry, Nana, I said. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The Nana patted my head very stiffish. Quite all right, she said, kind of mumbly. After that, I got down from the table, and me and my friends went back to Lucille's room. And guess what? Things got funnier, because Lucille said we could only play with the games in her closet on account of they weren't even expensive. First, we played shoots and ladders. Then we played Twister and Bingo and Chinese checkers and Tic-Tac-Toad tic and Candyland. Plus, we also played Let's Spin Till We Get Real Dizzy and Fall Down. And guess what? I didn't even break anything. Hey, I think I'm getting the hang of this party, I said very happy. Just then, the Nana knocked on Lucille's door. Time for you ladies to put on your pajamas, she told us. I danced all around the room real happy. Hooray, I said. Hooray for pajamas, because I brought my favorites. I quick put them on. See, Nana, see how biggish and baggyish they are? That is how comfy they feel, so comfortable. The Nana's eyes looked down at me. How very charming, she said. Just then, that Grace jumped right in front of me. Look at mine, Nana, she said. See mine? My pajamas have neon green polka dots on them. How very colorful, said the Nana. All of a sudden, Lucille popped out of her big closet. Ta-da! Look at me, everyone. I am wearing my beautimous pink satin night nightie. See me? See how lovely I look? I look like a gorgeous model in this thing, she said. Lucille let me and Grace fill her material. How very smoothy, I said. After that, me and Grace unrolled our sleeping bags on the floor, and then Nana took the silk bedspread off of Lucille's bed. Time to get your beauty sleep, princess, she told Lucille. Then those two kissed, two kiss, kissed and hugged goodnight, and then Nana shut the door. Only guess what? Lucille didn't even get in her bed. She kept twirling around in her pink satin nightgown. This is how models twirl, she said. They twirl so you can see their fronts and their backs. Lucille wouldn't stop twirling. See my front? See my back, she said. Me and that Grace got up on her bed to watch her twirl. Lucy's bed was soft and cushy. We bounced up there a tiny bit. Lucille stopped twirling. Hey, don't, she said. That bed is for beauty sleep only. I patted her bed very admiring. Yeah, only it's too bad because we can't actually play up here because this bat, this mattress is a bouncy one, I said. Just then Lucille's face did a sneaky smile. Want to bounce, she said real softly. Want to really, really bounce? She tiptoed to her door and looked down the hall. Come on, she whispered. Follow me. I grabbed Philip Johnny Bob and followed her and followed after Lucille and that Grace. We tiptoed down the hall and around the corner, and then Lucille opened the door to a big guest room, and there was a giant bed in that place. See it, she said. See how huge that bed is? My Nana had specially made in, because we had tall company. Lucille quick shut the door after us. Come on, let's go, she said. And so all of us run into the big bed speedy quick, and we jumped and jumped and jumped on that thing. I sang a joyful song. It is called Jumping, Jumping, Jumping on the Giant Bed. Jumping, Jumping, Jumping on the Giant Bed, I sang. Only too bad for me, because all of a sudden, I remember something very important. And it is called Mother and Daddy Said No Jumping. Hmm, so she does remember the rules, right? I got off the bed speedy fast. Yeah, only here's the problem, I said. I am not actually allowed to jump because mother and daddy said no jumping. And so you guys should stop jumping too because that would be polite of you. Lucille and that Grace didn't pay any attention to me. 
this is how come I had to get back on the giant bed and shout in their faces. Stop jumping, I said, because I am not allowed to jump, and you guys shouldn't jump too. Grace sprang way high in the air. Who's jumping? I'm not jumping, she said. She giggled very silly. I'm bouncing. Just then, my whole face got happy. I hugged and hugged that girl, because mother and daddy didn't say I couldn't bounce. After that, I bounced and bounced and bounced. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. On the giant bed, I sang. I bounced till sweat came on my head. Then I flopped down on the bed to rest. I flopped on a, a plumpery pillow. Ooh, Lucille, this is the most plumpery pillow I have ever seen. I told her, I told her, of course it is, silly, said Lucille. That's because my Nana has her pillows handmade in Sweden. I quick sling the plumpery pillow over to my friend Grace. Grace, hey Grace, feel how plumpery this pillow is, I said. Only Grace didn't actually see it coming and it accidentally hit her in the head. I peeked at her under that thing. Yeah, only that didn't even harm you, I bet, because the plumpery pillows don't hurt, right? Don't hurt people, right, Grace, right? That Grace did a teeny grin. Then she took the plumpery pillow off her head and she swung it all around. And she hit me in the tummy. Oof, I said. Then I laughed and laughed. Hey, I was right. Plumpery pillows don't hurt people. After that, I hit Lucille in the head with my plumpery pillow. Plus, also, I hit Grace again. Then those guys get their own plumpery pillows. And all of a sudden, we kept on hitting each other. Very fun. Only then, just then, a mistake happened. Because I didn't even know there was a rip in my plumpery pillow. And so the next time I hit Grace, all of my feathers exploded out of it. There were a million, bazillion of those things floating at floaty things. They filled the whole air practically. Lucille did a gasp. That Grace did a gasp too. I danced around very giggly. Hey, it's snowing, I said. It's snowing. It's not. Just then the door swung open very fast. It was Lucille's Nana. She saw me holding the broken plumpery pillow. My heart pounded hard inside of me. Hello, I said very nervous. How are you today? I am fine, except I am having a little bit of a feather problem, apparently. Then Anna walked at me very slow. Then she took my pillow out of my hands, and she hid her face in that flat thing. And she didn't come out for a real long time. So... Did we just reach kind of an important part in our story? Something that might start with a C. Do you remember what it's called? C L the climb. Climax. No. Yeah. Yep. Camila, say it. What was it? Climax. The climax, right? So we kind of just reached our climax point, right? Where now, you know. Not only did Junie B. Jones spill all over herself, she has spilled on the floor, she's done all this other stuff. Well, now she's broke open a fluffy, feathery pillow. The feathers are everywhere. And the Nana is like, oh my goodness. Like, she's looking at her like, she doesn't even know what to do with Junie B. at this point, right? So, I'm actually going to write that. Um, I'm going to write Climax. I'm going to write J.B. I'm going to write J.B. for Junie B. Um, broke. Open. A. Pillow. And now there are feathers everywhere, right? All right. So do you notice kind of how like when I did my character setting problem, how now I'm just kind of keeping track of like the different events and stuff that are happening. And I'm not even necessarily keeping track of everything that's going on in the story. I'm just keeping track of the ones that really are sticking out to me. 
So this is kind of what I'm expecting that we are going to be doing while we're independent reading. Because when you're reading your own chapter books like this, whether it's on Epic or you have your own chapter book, you need to be doing something similar to this. So you're really able to keep track of your thinking and keep track of your reading. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard when you're reading because you're not going to be able to say, oh, yeah, I know this happened. I know this happened. I know this happened. OK, so you want to make sure you're doing something similar to this. Sounds good. We got that. Yeah. OK. All right. So now we are going to move on.